welcome everybody to the monthly live. Just got a notification. Whistlekick Mar- is, Whistle is, is live. Just got a notification. Apparently, we can beat that horse more. <laughs> welcome to a live episode. I don't know what episode number it is. We'll figure that out later. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. But this is the live Q and A episodes that we've done. This is what the third time we've done this. Second time we've done this. Third time I think doing it live <laughs> like this. Yeah, and we're excited. Yeah, Jeremy Lesniak, Andrew Adams, and if you've checked out the past Q and A episodes, you know roughly what we're doing. If you have not checked them out before, welcome. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're gonna. Andrew's going to hit me with questions I have not seen before. I'm going to answer them. I have five minutes yep, five minutes. to answer them. And the advantage to doing what we're doing here. Oh, let me do this so we can turn the comment. Like we can see the comments. You can chime in. You can offer your feedback. Yeah. You can participate in what we're doing here. Or maybe they have a question. Or maybe they have a question. Yeah. Live questions count. Absolutely. All right. Uh, if you're new to the show, whistlekick.com, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to watch it, go to YouTube. Our social media handles are at whistlekick everywhere. If you want to support us, podcast15 gets you 15% off at whistlekick.com. Uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. We're going to talk a little bit about Patreon later and one of the big new things that we added that is, is kind of fun and Pretty exciting. Cool. And we're also going to talk about the new page, whistlekick.com slash family, why, how, the where I just told you. So let's go. Let's do it. Okay. Question number one. Question one. Was sent in by listener of the show, Stephen Watson. Mm-hmm. Very insightful person. Came to our free training day. It was mm-hmm. great to meet him there. Great guy. Uh, in your experience, what is the most unexpected benefit a newcomer martial artist reliably happens upon. It's been a long time since I've been a newcomer, but I've talked to people. I've talked to a lot of newcomers mm-hmm. to martial arts. And it's not so much you. Uh, yeah. New people that start, what do they rely on yeah. find? I, I'm, I'm shifting my mindset from yeah. what I do not remember experiencing to what other people may experience. Um. Surprising, right? You said surprising? Uh, Unexpected. Unexpected. Okay, so we're not talking about the physical benefits. We're not talking about the things that, you know, a lot of people join martial arts for, you know, I want to learn self-defense. I want to lose weight. I want to have better flexibility. These are all expected. There's also the the discipline, focus, et cetera, that are expected. How How do I express it in words? There's a... There's an energy, there's a resilience, I think, that starts to show up for people day to day Mm -hmm. that they don't expect. And I hear it expressed in a lot of different ways. Little things at work don't bother me quite as much. Mm, Or, you know, I'm, I'm finding that even at the end of a long day, I'm able to be more present with my kids. There's a, um, there's an inner strength. It's such a cliche phrase, but it's probably the best way to, to express it generically that happens for a lot of people. And because it's so hokey to try to describe, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anybody who's watching or listening, if you've been training well, you know what I'm talking about. But when you start to experience it for the first time, when you... You know, maybe you started training in the spring and you show up to family Thanksgiving and, you know, you find you're like, I didn't need three beers to get through that meal with relative so-and-so who drives me nuts. Didn't bother me quite as much. It's the little things like that that start to build and people are like, oh, this is starting to shift who I am at a pretty fundamental level. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I can see that. What different from what my answer would have been? What would your answer have been? My answer would have been people do not expect that they are going to get a better understanding of their body Mm. and how and how and recognition as to how their body moves Mm. uh, and and balance. Yeah, and and balance. Like I was talking with a student um, the other day, uh, a younger student who's coming up through the ranks and 
you know, one of the things that I want them to start to be able to do is to be able to punch with force mm -hmm. at someone and not hit them. Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to have the the understanding of their body enough to be able to punch fast and hard, but just barely hit. And that only comes from understanding the length of your arm yeah. and how it comes out. And people don't understand. People don't know where they, they are in space. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's what that would have been my answer. But uh, your answer is really good too. And I, I, I totally would see that. I think more people probably experience early on what you're talking about. I didn't go there because I didn't think about that one. Cause to me, that's so expected. Yeah. And that that's, that's where one of the places I struggle in what we do is the fact that I have been training since I was four years old. Mm -hmm. I don't know what my life looks like without martial arts. Yeah. So to empathize that I'm speculating, I'm entirely relying on what other yeah. people have told me. Yeah. I get that. That makes sense. Um, why don't we take a little break here after that first question? Good job. And let's Thank talk you. about some new Patreon stuff. All right. So for those of you who are in the Patreon, you already know this. If you're not part of the Patreon, Patreon is one of the ways that we cover the expenses. You know, the, these, these sets and these wardrobes are very expensive. They're, they're obviously they're not, we're, we're making a joke. I'm pointing <laughs> to my television and literally the first sweatshirt that I made, this sweatshirt goes back to 2014. Wow. Yeah. But there are a lot of expenses behind the scenes. We use the Patreon to try to cover some of them and in exchange, we're trying to provide value. So if you're, if you're unfamiliar, patreon.com slash was okay. If you are familiar and maybe this is enough to push you over the edge. And uh, we have, have always had the option in there for a group call, mm -hmm. but we had some people come through that were school owners. And I reached out and I said, what if we make the group call a, a school owner's mastermind? And they all went, <gasps> Yes. Yeah. Now, if you know anything about masterminds, you know that they're generally expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, you could get in on this one for 50 bucks. And what I have quietly told myself is as we get more people in it, we will do more frequent calls. Right now, they're monthly. But if we can get a dozen <clears> people <throat> in there, we'll do two or three a month. And that's where the real value is going to come. So if you think about what you would spend, what you're getting, if you're a school owner, if you want to participate in this facilitated school owner thing, check it out. And if you're not a school owner and you're like, you know, I think it's cool what they're doing, maybe that's enough for you to go check it out and potentially join one of the other tiers or take other value from that tier or reach out to me and say, hey, Jeremy, what if you have this benefit? I'll jump in. I'll probably do it. It's all about value exchange. Yeah, I, one of the things that I found uh, when I became a Patreon subscriber, which I became before I was a host of the show. It's true. We go way back. And yep. you keep doing it, which I appreciate. Um, and honestly, I, I think it's great because then you can speak honestly. You're choosing to part with your money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but one of the things that I appreciated, and I made sure that uh, I was going to get extra episodes. Like the first tier is you just get um, – an email, you know, a couple times a month on what's going on within Whistlekick. And that, you know, that's useful. I appreciated that. Including who's coming up on the show. It's the only place we post yep. that. Yep, absolutely. We have some big names coming up, mm -hmm. but only some of you know who it is. Um, but one of the things that was important to me was I felt in listening to the shows and listening to you talk that I held a lot of the same beliefs in my training that you do. And so by pledging at the, peer, the tier that I'm at, I got extra episodes. I got okay. extra time listening to you talk about your training philosophies uh, and how you do things and how you teach things. That was important to me. And so that's why I continued to contribute. At the time, I would say they were less scripted. They were more unscripted. Mm. But now things are zero scripted. Yeah, and, which is raw. I like that. So it's it's really hard to get less scripted. But what happens on Patreon with the content is, you know, like when we came back from Comic-Con, Mm -hmm. We debriefed yep. in video for people. You know, if you, if you if you like what we do, if you want to see behind the scenes, if you want more of what we do, Patreon. Awesome. Boom. Do it. Next. All right. Question number two. This yeah. question was sent to us by Jared Wilson. Hi, Jared. Although he does admit he stole it from fellow podcaster Guy Windsor. I don't Guy know who Windsor. that is. I don't either. That's okay. 
Okay. But he didn't want to take credit for this question because okay. it was someone else. That's cool. Shout out to Jared. And if you have not checked out Marshall Thoughts, you got to check out Marshall Thoughts. Okay. So his question is, what is the best idea you've never acted on? And I'll preface it by saying, let's relate it to martial arts because no, it could be something else. So many ideas. <laughs> the best idea I've never acted on. See, this is difficult because I'm going to, I have to limit it to ideas we will not act on. Fair. Because there are so many things on the roadmap, in the pipeline, mm -hmm. however you want to look at it, mm -hmm. that we are trying to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd like to see this. Oh, that's good. I'm on the verge of, of publicly saying we're like what the original idea was, which is where the name comes from. But I would still, I still see a lot of value in that, and I still want to hold that idea back because I hope to make it happen. We didn't do it because it was a, a six-figure engineering challenge, um, which doesn't work unless all the figures are zeros. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let me think for a moment and, and entertain. Okay, entertain the audience while um, I'm thinking. It might, well, it might yeah, yeah, just talk. Well, All right. I'm going to go over here. So for those that are watching, so Jeremy just left because Jared Wilson gave him a question that was too difficult for him to answer, uh, which I find, to, to be honest, if I'm being totally honest, I find totally hilarious. I'm uh, sure everyone else does too. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, you know, one of the well, things... I have we, a spreadsheet we, of ideas. There's got to be... Have, so we do five minutes, right, Jeremy? By the way, this is cutting into your time. So Jeremy gets five minutes to give his answer. Um, and one of the reasons we limit it to five minutes is Jeremy has, you know, the gift to gab a little bit and he likes to go on and on and on. So this kind of limits how long he can talk. So uh, Jared, good job. You, you may have broken Jeremy, uh, which I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I want to do this show without him. It would be weird. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that. Would it be whistle kick? With, could it be whistle kick without Jeremy? That's now. There's a question. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I think we we need Jeremy. We need to get him fixed. But he's in the back. He's looking for an Excel spreadsheet um, because Jared broke him. He had a whole spreadsheet of ideas. He had a whole spreadsheet of ideas. Okay. He's looking for him now. I think it's gone. I think I think having that list stressed me out so much. Wow. Um, okay. So, all right, I'm going to completely dodge this question. Okay. And I'm going to refer back to we talked. We actually talked about this a little bit this morning on First Cup. Uh, I think it was Chris. Chris Rickard asked, "How do I decide to take an idea from idea to acting on it?" Mm -hmm. And I've had to get really good at that because I am constantly generating ideas. And one of the things that's happened over 20 years of entrepreneurship is a really good filter for what idea warrants time. We have scaled to the point now where, because there are people like yourself who help with things mm -hmm. that collaborate with me on specific things that I can, that either I find a person to partner with me on an idea or it's dead. We have a handful of things, you know about some of them that are probably happening in 2022. I'm not going to say what those are. Yeah, I get because that. some of them are good and big. The ideas that aren't worth doing, I don't think about anymore. They don't get space in my brain. Yeah, they, I'm struck. Yeah. Like this is really a struggle for me. So I hope that even though I did not answer the question at all, the non-answer uh, is still of value. All right. Well, you know, the only one that can truly tell us whether you answered it or not is Jared. I guess he's the one that asked the question. Can you think of any? You and I have talked about a ton of stuff. I'm not at liberty to discuss. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, I I, I don't I don't know. Um. My guess is there are probably things that happened earlier early on that you didn't do. You know? Like we didn't have a second tournament doesn't mean we won't ever have a tournament again. Oh well, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I tried to have what is becoming all in weekend but turned into free training day and mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. back to all in weekend. It just took six years. Yeah. 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 So. 
So the answer is, Jared, there are lots of things that hasn't haven't happened, but he doesn't want to divulge them because he doesn't want to give secrets away. That's what it is. And that's an okay answer. That's yeah. fair. All right. Thank you for your understanding. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, let's do a review. Let's, okay. let's let's give stuff away. Everybody right. loves giving stuff away. So just a reminder, um, the easiest, cheapest thing you can do to help us out is leave a review. Spotify now lets you leave reviews. Like, it's just stars. You can't actually say anything about the show. But mm -hmm. if you can grab your Spotify app on your phone or tablet, leave hopefully five stars. Uh, Apple Podcasts, even if you're not an iPhone user, you can still leave a review. Facebook reviews, go to facebook.com slash whistlekick. You can leave a review there. Or the kind of generic Google review for the business. Th those are all helpful. Uh, and if you do that, will read a review and you may get read on the show. And if you do, you email me, jeremywhistlekick.com, and I'll send you a gift code. Not a discount, but like a gift code. Like you can go spend money, free money, at whistlekick.com. All right. Awesome. That was a really long intro to a very short review. <laughs> From Cosimo the Great. Oh, I love it. Subject, traditional martial arts. Exactly the show I've been looking for. Wow. Doesn't get any better than that. We hit someone's yes list. Thank you. That's I appreciate awesome. that. So Cosimo the Great, send me some email in showing that you are Cosimo the Great on Apple Podcasts. Hey, we just saw it all in weekend. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll be doing random stuff and they just blink and I'm like, yay, yay. somebody else is coming. <laughs> uh, Cosmo the Great, send me something showing that you are you. And I'll send you that code out for the store. You can use it on anything. Anything at whistlekick.com. And yes, you can combine it with you know other other percentages. Like yeah, people are stacking them. I'm like, man, I just lost some money on this shirt. That's okay. Because I appreciate the reviews. And it's, it's all, worthwhile. And it's all We're buying the, reviews. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's all in the name of connecting, educating, and entertaining traditional martial artists. That's right. That's what we do. All right. All right. Question number three comes from I hope this one's easier. <laughs> Well, the other one made my brain hurt. <laughs> All right. This comes from uh, Jonathan Kenny. Okay. Past guest of the show. Yeah. Um, and his question is, what are your top five pieces of advice for all martial artists? Five? Yep. <sighs> one minute per. Okay. Go. No. Hold on. Pause. <laughs> Next month, I, I'm bringing a clipboard and a pen. Because okay. I can't organize my thoughts that quickly in my brain. Five? Uh, that I don't make up these questions. But you can filter them. But why would I? This is more fun. The audience likes Why this. not make it tw top 27? Okay, fine. Top 27. No, I'm not doing that advice. one either. Okay. <laughs> top five pieces of advice. What? For all, any martial For all martial artists. Okay. Uh, slow and steady. Don't expect to progress overnight. Mm -hmm. Two. Don't expect that your progress is constantly upwards. You will regress at things at times. Do not get disheartened. Take a big step back. The longer you are in martial arts, the more you have to realize that your progress cannot be illustrated each training session. The more you're there, the more you have to take a step back. If you've been training for 50 years, you might have to look at something over the course of a year or two in order to see progress because you've gotten good. And there is, by nature, a diminishing rate of return for any effort on any individual pursuit. That's two. Three, have fun. If you find a way to have fun, you will continue training. You will train for the right reasons. You will get all the benefits. You learn better when you're happier. And you bring joy to those around you. Okay? Three. That was, that was number three. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Martial arts is very good at providing physical conditioning, strength, etc. Martial arts trained exclusively for mm, the exclusive strength training. Mm, how do I say this? If you don't supplement with other things beyond stance work, etc., you are going to develop muscle imbalances. And if you do not address those, ideally through resistance training, aka weightlifting you are more likely to put yourself into a hole, 
that the way out is joint replacement. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be much. Five. Constantly assess why you were doing the things you were doing. Doesn't mean that you have to be critical of them, but understanding why do I go to this class? Why am I having a hard time with this thing? Why do I not like working with this person? The more you ask that question, the more you can understand your motivations. And if things are not as you want them to be, then you can address them. You can't fix a problem you don't know about. Bam. That was good. With, with another minute to spare, you did great. All that hemming and hawing at the beginning. I had to come back strong. After yeah, that last no, that, that's true. That's true. <sighs> So, you know, and all, why people, your last point there was, you know, why do people train? For a lot of people, it's to be part of a community and to be part of a family. Sure. And we have a family here at Whistlekick. We do. We do. And, you know, it's funny. When we talked about the word that we were going to use, mm. I struggled with this. I struggled yeah. with using the word family because it is overused in a lot of contexts. Mm -hmm. And... Without going into detail, the word family carries some some context mm -hmm. for me that is not always positive. Sure. Well, and I think a lot of the words that we discussed when we were trying to figure out how we were going to frame this to people, I don't think we found any word that was... There was no perfect yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like every this word... Was had, the closest. Yeah, every word had something connected to it in some way, shape, or form that didn't resonate with us. And when I took a step out, and this is this is part of the value of having you on board and helping with a lot of these things, is you'll challenge my beliefs. And when I took a look at things as best I could through the eyes of others, I realized that my association of whistle kick is different. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, you know, we, we talk about being in orbit, you know, that you fall into the gravity of this mission. And I'm I am not the sun, but I am in the sun. Like I am like, yeah, I am in the center point and I am not escaping, but it skews my perspective. So this is all to say, if you've been watching first cup, you know that, that this is here. Whistlekick.com slash family. Oh, Jeremy, what's this? Is this some new? No, no. Here's what we did. We asked people to do a lot of things. You could buy stuff, Patreon, leave a review, and there's like there's more. And the list was getting long. Mm -hmm. And we said, look, okay, we can focus on a couple of the things, which what are we focusing on in on intros and outros moving forward? It's Patreon and Podcast One Five as a discount code. But what about all the other things that, that we would like people to do, some of which don't cost money? So we made a separate page, whistlekick.com slash family. There is no link in the navigation to it. You have to type it in. And what does that barrier mean? That means that you are probably part of the Whistlekick family if you're going to do that. And yeah. what do you get when you get to the other side of that? Well, you get a page. It's a pretty simple page. And it lists out all the things, and it will be a growing list of things that you can do that help us out. Like one of them I added, uh, we use Libsyn as our podcast host, and they rolled out a referral program. They're like, do you want to do it? I'm like, yeah, whatever. So now at the bottom, if you want to host a podcast, we think you should use Libsyn because we choose to use Libsyn. And if you do it, we make like, some money. Okay. So there's like, it's that kind of stuff, but that's also kind of lame. That breaks my mm, yeah. um, philosophy of value exchange. If we're going to do something, there has to be value out there. So in order to get you to go back periodically, I have in my calendar, go update whistlekick.com slash family. So like the first update was I put in a picture of, of me and actually it's, it's that picture over there. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's the earliest picture of me that I'm aware of training. It's not training. I'm wearing a gi. I'm like six at a tournament. The next update was some photos of you training, early photos of you training. Yep. And so that's the kind of stuff we're going to do. It's going to be kind of this behind the scenes. And what I'm thinking of is like a Patreon light. And I like it because your barrier to entry is typing. Yeah. Or Typing or typing, depending <laughs> on how closely you can look at your phone. So, and, and there's a lot of stuff there. I mean, and some of it, like you've already mentioned, and, and one of them is we have job openings. Yeah, we You're never talk okay. about that. Like we don't talk about it much, but because it's it's far down the list. Yeah, it, yeah. But there, if you 
think that you'd like to contribute in some way to help whistle kick and you have a skill set that would match up with one of our job openings yeah you can work, work for you can work whistle kick so here's the gist to sum all that up if you think that you are part of the family and that's entirely up to you we're not kicking anybody out you know this is this is not you know we're not excluding anyone from from this group but if you if the mission resonates with you and if you're not sure what the mission is whistlekick.com like it's all over the place but if the mission resonates with you and you consider yourself part of the circle the family whatever you want to call it then i would encourage you to check out that page a couple times a month monthly whatever you know and just skim top to bottom because we're not going to put the updates in the same place every time so hopefully you find somebody there awesome all right fourth and final question Men is strong. I gotta, I'm gonna do this. Okay, we got this. I'm, I'm, now I don't want to tell you what's from Jared Wilson. Jared, you're fired. <laughs> all right, this was not so bad. You're, you're good. You'll be all right on this one. Okay, question number four from Jared Wilson. This question is: What new weapon, i.e., one you haven't trained in before, would you want to dedicate time to, and why? I've spent no time training in the traditional Chinese weaponry. Uh, I find like three section staff mm -hmm. to be fascinating because I know how much I've smashed myself in the back of the head with nunchaku. And if they're longer and there's a, a second pivot point, I expect I'm going to hit myself in other new places that I've not hit myself while training sure. Kabuto. Um, That's probably the one. Three sections down. Because everything else is just a different balance implementation of other things, right? Like you're either holding a weapon with one hand or two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. either, you know, short and heavy or short or long or bladed, right? It's the way I'm going to swing a stick is the way up roughly the way I'm going to swing a sword, mm -hmm. roughly the way I'm going to swing a comma. Tunfa has some difference there because there's the rotation. But when I look at doing something new, I'm generally looking at what is the thing that is most different from anything I've done because mm -hmm. that's where I find I progress the most. And the thing that is most opposite, I think, is three-section staff. And that correlates to, we had a question earlier in the year, what martial art would you like to have more time in that you don't? And same Chinese martial arts. Yeah. So that kind of, and that makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, for me, it would be rope dart. See that I, I could make just as strong of an argument for that. Cause I've done nothing with thrown weapons. Yeah. There are actually some really cool people on TikTok doing rope dart stuff. Well, we we've interviewed some of them on the, on the show. Yes. But what's fun about the videos on TikTok is they will set their phone up like next to the target. Cause they're that oh. trusting of their skill. So you get like, Rope dart cool. to the face. Yeah, it's really neat. That's pretty cool. Awesome. There's our uh, our four questions. That concludes our, our Q&A. Nobody wrote any in. We I would know. have done bonus. Uh, we could have. Bonus right. questions. BQs. Maybe we'll have some BQs next, next time. time. If you do have other questions, send them to me. I loved. I love the fact that Jeremy doesn't know what they are ahead of time. The, I think that's what makes this fun. Well, because then we got to break him. So embarrassed. <laughs> I don't know what to do. It's all good, man. I hope so. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. So if you like what we do, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Podcast one to five at whistlekick.com. Check out whistlekick.com slash family. Reviews, all that stuff. Uh Cosmo the the great. Great. Please email me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. We'll get you that discount code. And to everybody else, thanks. We'll see you next time. Excuse me. Oh, I'm burping. Oh, my gosh. I feel so rude. This was a pretty raw episode, though. So, you know, fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, have, have a, a great, great day. day.